<laughs> Go. <laughs> in City of the Big Shoulders, players take on the role of investors. They'll start new companies, trade in shares, hire employees, equip factories, produce goods, and sell them to be delivered to homes across the Midwest. The game takes place over five decades. Each decade consists of five unique phases. A stock phase in which players buy and sell stock and found companies. A building phase in which they place new action spaces on the board. An action phase where players send out partners across the city to make deals on behalf of their companies, i.e. worker placement. Then an operating phase in which the players' companies buy resources, produce goods, ship them out to Chicago, and finally, a cleanup phase in which the board is set up for the following decade. Players start the game with a small amount of money. Over the course of game, the game, they'll use their personal money to start new companies and to invest into companies belonging to other players. All those companies grow, or as they grow, they will pay dividends to the players who hold shares in them. Accordingly, the value of those shares will improve You'll then use that money to purchase more shares, and the cycle repeats throughout the game. At the end of the fifth decade, the game ends. Players cash in all their portfolios, all their shares. Whomever has the most money wins. All right, so what is it you guys are looking at? So on the main board here, over in the top right-hand corner, we have the round track. So it's the game's played over five decades or five rounds. I'll use those terms interchangeably. Then down here we have the phase track. So each round of the game has a different five different phases within it, and it also has its own determining turn order. So a turn order is going to be uh, in regards to different aspects of the game as we go along. I'll explain that more. Then we have the company share value chart here. We have the hay market square and resource markets. Then the worker placement or the building locations here in the main part of the board there. Then down below that, we have the capital assets market. Then we have the bank pool. This is where sold shares back to the bank are going to go. Also has some, some uh, information that, well, unfortunately will get covered up, but it's pretty well known as we go along. Produce goods demand area over on the left part of the board. And we have the appeal track over there. So if you're familiar with Arkwright, you'll, under, you'll remember what appeal is. Then off board, we have everybody's, the company charters for their individual companies that they're running. We have the bank owned company charters, companies that have not yet been started. Then we have the general supply of different resources and off camera, we have the bank. Then over on the player tableaus, we have a player aid, and the player aid also includes a place for their personal treasury, so all their money we're playing with poker chips. We have their stock portfolio, or what stock every player owns, and then their partner tokens, or their worker placement action selection tokens as well, and company charter, obviously, for the company that they run. All right, so that said, we're going to go ahead and zoom in now to show you guys a little bit tighter picture here, right there. All right, so the game plays over five rounds, as I previously said, and each round consists of five phases. The five phases are right here. We have the stock phase, clockwise, starting with priority deal. Well, at the beginning of the game, we determined that Jess is going to be have priority deal. So she's going to begin this phase. It's then clockwise around the table. Players can sell and buy stock as well as start companies. This is important to note. This is the only time that players will spend their own money out of their own pockets. This is the only phase. Every other bit of money that is spent from the players will come from the company charters. Okay, so only during the stock phase will they spend their own money. The companies all have their own money and every other phase will be spent spending the company money. Is that clear? Is there any questions on that? Okay, cool. Then there's the building phase. This happens simultaneously. 
players place one building which makes available more action selection spaces in the next phase. So all of these spaces out here are going to get filled up with more and more worker placement spots for players to be able to place their partners. Then we go in to the action phase. In the action phase, think of it as the worker placement phase, this goes in turn order going top to bottom as you guys are looking at it. So at the beginning of the game, Greg actually had first pick of all of the companies and then we went counterclockwise from there and then whoever was last gets priority deal which means they start the stock phase that also means they start the action selection phase as well and let me bring that just the hair out there we go all right so after the action phase we're going to go into the operating phase in the operating phase, this takes place in company appeal order going descending value. So whichever company is the most appealing will start and so on and so forth. Companies now quote unquote operate in descending appeal value. They'll purchase resources, produce goods within the company's factories, trigger manager abilities, sell goods to fill demand, pay dividends to the shareholders and adjust the share value of the stocks. So. There's a lot going on in that, but we'll cover all that here in a little bit. And then finally, there's a cleanup phase, which we're just going to reset the board for the next round. So are you all ready to actually learn how to play the game? Yep. All right, the stock phase. So players using their own money can sell and buy shares of companies that have already been floated or have already been started. They may also start new companies. Every company has seven certificates which represent 100% of the value of the company, all right? So every company here has a 30% director share or president share. I'm gonna use director and president interchangeably. There is a 20, one 20% preferred certificate, so that's 20%, so two regular shares essentially, and five regular certificates of 10% each. That totals of 100% of the company's value. So all of the company's value is going to be tied up in these shares, okay? Starting with the player who has the priority deal marker and moving clockwise, players can choose to do any of the following actions. They can sell as many shares as they want, then they may buy one certificate or one piece of paper from any of the started companies, either from the bank pool or from any of the available companies that have already been started, or they can pass. Let's talk about selling stock first. Selling always takes place prior to buying. Selling certificates of a company does preclude you from buying any shares of that company uh, for the remainder of this round. So for instance, backing back out here, if I had a share of Cracker Jack, of the Cracker Jack company, and I sold a share of the Cracker Jack company back to then get money for that, I no longer can buy shares of Cracker Jack this round. Okay, that makes sense? You're gonna place the sold shares into the bank pool. You're gonna collect money from the bank equal to the share value. So if I sold the share of Cracker Jack, I would get $35 to my pocket because I'm the owner of that share. And then we're going to drop the value of that share once per every share sold to the bank. Okay, that makes sense. Any questions about selling stock? That makes you sense. always sell before you buy. Then you may buy a single share of stock, okay, or a single certificate, a single piece of paper. After choosing to sell or not, player can purchase a single certificate. Where they're buying from dictates where the money goes, okay? If they buy from a company, so I say, hey, Martin, I'm going to purchase a share of the Cracker Jack company, which I could not do if I just sold it, but that's okay. Let's say I didn't sell a share of the Cracker Jack company. I say, hey, Martin, I would then give Martin $35 to his company, and his company would issue me one share of his stock, a 10% share, and that would go into my personal holdings, okay? So I bought it from the company. The money goes to the company. If I bought it from the bank pool, or let's say Ken, I had sold this previously, let's say, and this is in the bank pool, Ken says, hey, I wanna buy that share. Well, the current value is, let's say 25 bucks. I, he would pay 25 bucks where? To the bank, because it's in the bank pool. 
the money would go to the bank and he would then take that share. Or if you start a new company, in which case the player will pay the money to the new company's charter itself. It's You're buying one share or one certificate from the new company. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So players can purchase either a regular 10% share or the 20% preferred share, or if they're starting a new company, they must purchase the director's 30% share. Each 10% that is purchased costs the purchasing player the current amount of the share's value. So if a company, let's say Cracker Jack, were valued at 50 bucks, if that's the case, if it's shared, uh, I want to purchase a share of Cracker Jack at $50, I would have to pay 50 bucks to Cracker Jack. If I wanted the preferred share of Cracker Jack, which is 20%, well, that's essentially two shares. That means I'm going to pay Cracker Jack $100 from my personal, uh, from my pocket to get the preferred share. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The maximum that any player can own of any company is 60%, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So if you're the president of a company, you have a 30% share, that means you can buy three more shares of your own company, max. Also, the director or president may never purchase their company's 20% share. So if you have the 30%, you can't also have the 20. Mm -hmm. You can have 30 and three singles, three tens. If a player passes, as long as the other players do not also <coughs> pass, it can come back to their next action and then sell by start a new company if they want on their turn. Only when all players pass successively does the stock phase end immediately? And then the priority deal marker will go to the left of the last player that took an action. Okay. So if Jess bought a share, Ken passed, Martin bought a share or sold or did something, Martin did something other than pass, and then everybody passes coming back around, well, Martin's the last one to take an action, this would then go to Greg. Does that make sense? Okay, it goes to the left of that. Okay. Now, before we start talking about starting a new company, let's go over the anatomy of a company charter. So, on the company charter here, you see that there is the name of the company. So, Spalding, Sporting Goods, these are historic companies. Then, we have the type of the company, the, or the type of good that the company will produce. So, there are four different types. There are meat packing, dry goods, there is shoes, and there's food and dairy. This, Spalding, is dry goods, which makes sense, sporting goods. Then there is the starting appeal value up here in the top right corner. There is the price for selling produced goods. The base price is at the top. And then there can be one, two, or three, depending. So, for instance, there can be more salespeople here. And these increase the value of the sold goods. Then there are factories. All companies have two possibly a third factory. This one only has two. It shows the required number of workers to run each factory. So for this factory, it requires one worker. This one requires two workers. Then it shows the required resources to run that factory. So for this uh, factory, it requires a black and pink cube, a blue and pink cube for the second factory. Then how many goods <coughs> that factory is going to produce. So this one will produce two of what? Well, they're dry goods. All produced goods look like this and where they come from, which type of company they come from, dictates what type of good that it is. Then there is a bonus. If there are managers, that company for that factory will then get whatever bonus that, they, that is triggered. There are automated workers. So if there is a worker here and it ends up getting automated, an automated worker can, and then this guy could come over here, and there's a possible bonus underneath the automated worker space. So in this case, would produce three goods when this factory runs. Then at the bottom down here, there is space for the company's treasury. All right. So this is where its money is going to go, its unsold shares, any resources that it gets, and any unsold goods will also go here. All right. And some companies have a space for capital assets, as shown right here, whereas this company does not have a space for company assets. Okay, I'll explain more on that here in a little bit. As we go along, you're going to see how everything works. All right, so that is the company charters. 
Any questions on that? To start a company is very simple. They buy one share. That share is the president's certificate or director's certificate. So they say, hey, I want to go ahead and start the DBH. Okay. Well, in that case, that player would then get the charter. They would get all of the shares of the company. They would then put their markers out, one on the share chart and one on the starting appeal. The starting appeal for this company is at one. It would then go on top of any existing. But then the, the president needs to determine what the par price or the starting value of the company is. Anything in the shaded area here is a valid starting or par value for the company. And the director has to buy 30% or three shares essentially since that's a 30% share. So if I say I'm going to par the company at $40, I then owe the company $120 and that $120 would then come into the company's charter like so and I personally would get that certificate. Okay. Then we would put out any automated workers that are potentially there for companies out on the available spaces as you see here. There we go. And ready to rock and roll. That's, I just bought one share, didn't I? I bought one 30% share to start a company and that's how a company starts. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions on starting a company? No. Or any questions on the stock round? Again, you can sell as much as you want. Stock price drops, you get cash. You can buy one certificate at a, in a given action goes around the table clockwise. You can keep buying, keep selling however you want until all players pass. Once all players pass, that's the end of the stock round. How, Good to go. How uh, far back do you go when you sell a stock? When you sell a stock, you're gonna drop one per share that you sold. So if you sold three shares, one, two, three drops. Cool, that work? Makes and let me sense. go ahead and get that one back there. All right, so that is the stock round or the stock phase. I know it's a lot of information, but it actually goes really quick and really easy once we get rocking and rolling. Next is the building phase. You see that this takes place simultaneously, and the building phase shows that every player starts the game with three building tiles like so, all right? They build one of these, they discard one, and they keep one for a subsequent round in which they're dealt two more. This happens each building phase. So simultaneously, players select one of the buildings to build and place it face down on what round it is. So everyone's gonna place one of these face down. Once everyone has placed that, they're gonna turn them face up. Then we're going to count the number of workers. So no workers on that one. For instance, if these, there we go. So there is one worker, one worker shown here. So that means one worker is going into the job market. So one worker then would go into the high, most expensive space in the job market. One worker, none, none, none. Okay. Uh, count the number. Yeah. And that's it. That is the building phase. Any questions on the building phase? That's pretty simple. Okay. Then we go into the action phase. Now that you've helped build small businesses around the city of Chicago, you're gonna be able to make deals with those businesses to help grow your company. So starting with the player who's first in turn order, in this case, it is Jess. She will be able to take one of her two partners that she starts with down here on her board, right here. She can place one of these two partners on any available worker action or worker placement space and immediately perform its action. Play continues until all players have placed all of their partners. Players start the game, as I said, with just two partners, but various events in the game allow you to gain more. So when all factories operate for the first time, so just like as shown here, the first time this company operates both, you'll notice that there is one partner right here for your first company. With the first time those, you then get another partner, so you'll have a third partner every round subsequent. Then the first time a player has a company reach the gain a partner bonus space on the appeal track right there. So every time their first company reaches that space, they get that permanent partner as well. And then uh, there is on the, at the beginning of the third round, everybody is going to get an additional partner automatically. Okay. 
Each of those can only be gained once per player in an entire game. All costs for an action are paid from the company's treasury that is gaining the benefit of the action. So if a player has multiple companies, they only have a limited number of partners to split between all of those companies. When they go to one of these action spaces, they say which company they are actually using the action for. The company that they're using the action for is the one that pays for that action. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Any green-backed worker <coughs> placement action spaces with the infinity symbol are unlimited and multiple partners can go there. All other buildings may only be used by the first partner to visit it, just like normal worker placement games. You must perform the entire action if you're able to, and each action has one of five ways money changes hands. Company pays the player, so for instance, the little symbol up here at the top, and I'll show you guys this. So, the company pays the player. There's another where the company pays the bank. So, the company paying the bank, and I'll show you this out here. So, the company paying the bank, as you can see here. Then, the bank pays the player, which this one, I'll bring over. I'm sorry, this is the bank pays the player, not the company. I apologize. Uh, the company pays the player right there. The bank pays the player there. And the bank pays the company, and the company pays shareholders. So company pays shareholders here, and bank pays company, like so. Okay? So those are the five ways that money is going to change hands during this step. We'll go over the available actions as they are at the start of the game, and as more are added during the game. So over on the left-hand side, you have higher workers. Hire any amount of workers for the amount shown there to be able to run your factories. So on a player's tableau, they have this company has space for three workers. They could hire one, two, or three workers. Pretty simple. And the cost for this worker would be 30. Additional ones would be 40. If there's nobody in the worker area, in the worker pool, well, they cost 50 bucks from there. Okay? Any questions on hiring workers? <coughs> All right. Then the next space is the advertising and start player right here. Company pays 20 bucks to the bank. It increases the company appeal by one. Notice the star. And over there you have the appeal track. So whatever the company is would then move up one space. And then they may become the start player. So if, for instance, the yellow player, so Martin in this case, takes that action, he would then become start player. But we do finish the round, so we don't skip Greg. Greg would then take his action, and then for subsequent rounds, that would be the new starting new player order. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Moving on. Next, we have, we're going to skip this. We'll come back. Hiring managers. So managers, the company pays 60 bucks to the bank, and then you place one manager into a factory on the company charter. So managers are the tan color meeples here, and they can go in any of the company manager spaces like so. When the factory produces goods, the manager ability associated with it will trigger. And we'll cover that a little bit later. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Next is hiring salespeople. The company pays 70 bucks to the bank, takes one salesperson, and places it onto the company charter. Well, salespeople will then go over here. And that will raise the, brace, the base price of all your sold goods. Instead of now $20 a piece, I will sell each good for $30 a piece. And other companies have multiple up to three salespeople available for hiring. Okay? Make sense? Makes sense. All right. Easy enough. Then there is capital investments right here. So, first off, the player is going to select capital investment from the open display of any of these five that are here. The company pays the shown amount to the bank, so 80 down to $40 there. They immediately gain a one-time bonus on the bottom right of the capital asset. So all of these that are out here have a bonus, a one-time immediate bonus of what happens. This is automate one worker. So choose which factory. So if I had, say, a worker there I could then choose to automate so I choose this one going left to right that one comes in there 
and he will move over to the other factory. If for whatever reason I chose to not place him over here to the other factory, or maybe there wasn't space because maybe I already had two of them there, and when this guy got automated, well, I have no space for him. In that case, he'll just go to the job market in the highest available space out there on the board. Make sense? Yep. Pretty easy? Okay, cool. So that is automating a worker. There are other actions that are available that will come out, including hiring a worker, which is just like this. However, I'm sorry, it's not hiring a worker. It's acquiring a worker from the general supply for free, but it's only one, okay? And it must be placed on one of your available factories. Then there is increase the company's appeal, one or two steps. That's pretty simple. Just increase the company's appeal as you see on the track. If the company qualifies for a bonus, they take the immediate bonus. Gain a worker, gain a salesperson, automate, get your free uh, partner. However, if you choose to not take the bonus or you can't take the bonus, the company just gets an extra 25 bucks from the bank into its treasury. Okay? Simple enough? Makes sense. Okay. After they've taken that <coughs> one capital asset, the company then can place it if it has a space available here. This then can be triggered during the action phase, which is the actual taking of actions, which is what we're talking about, the action phase, or in the operations phase when the company itself will actually operate. To do that, the company then will pay from the company to the bank that amount, which is $10, and they will get and do or do whatever it says here on the company charter. Oh, get two brown cubes if available from Haymarket Square. Okay, easy enough. So I could then tap this, put two on my board, boom, done, after having paid 10 bucks to the bank. All right? Makes sense. However, there are companies that do not have a capital asset space. If that's the case, you cannot place that there. It's discarded out of the game forever. That is capital assets. Afterward, all of these will slide one space to the right and we will refill the $80 spot on the left. Cool? Yep. All right. So that is all of those spaces. Over here, an extra dividend. The company must have a minimum of $100 in its treasury and immediately pays a dividend of $10 a share because there's 100%, $100, divide that by 10, there are 10 shares. There you go, 10 bucks a share, pay that to every shareholder, including the company, the bank, and any player owned shares, and then we'll adjust the share price. We'll talk about that more here in a little bit. Lastly, there's fundraising, and there are other fundraising spots down below here. Just get that amount of money to, from the bank to your company charter into the company's pockets to be able to take more actions on subsequent actions. Pretty simple. All right, those are all the available spaces as the game starts, and then there will be more as the game progresses. So that is the action phase. So we have a stock phase, buying and selling. This goes in priority deal order and clockwise around the table. Then placing one building each per player. Then actually placing your partners out here to take advantage of these actions, these buildings. Now we're going into the operations. And the operations phase here is each company is going to operate from highest to lowest in the appeal track, as indicated there. When a company operates, it's going to purchase resources from any of the three available markets out here, and then it's going to produce goods if it has the correct resources out here. So each factory will produce goods if possible. Then they're going to sell any produced goods from there over to the uh, the markets over there, then they're going to pay dividends based on how much they made or not. They're going to adjust the share price and then we're going to refill any of the markets up here. So let me go over these a little bit more in depth and then we'll get started on how to play the game. Okay. In the advanced game, which is what we're going to be playing, there is an emergency fundraising. So the operating company, as a first step, may issue any number of remaining shares from its treasury to the bank pool. So I don't have any money and maybe I need to buy resources so I can operate here, as you see there. Well, I could choose to issue as many shares as I wish. So let's say I choose to issue these two shares here of Spalding 
and let's say Spalding is valued at 60 bucks a piece. I issue those two shares, I would get 120 bucks because two shares times 60 into the treasury. And at that point, two shares, this would drop two steps. And then the Chicago stock market then penalizes you one more for running a poor company or poorly running a company and would drop one more. Okay. But I will have gotten 120 bucks into the company coffers to then be able to operate, to buy resources, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The next step and usually going to be the first step is purchase resources from the market. So the market up there at the top. The operating company can purchase any number in any type of resources from any of the markets to the right of the Haymarket Square that have a value amount above them. The market with the red X on it just shows what's going to be available. It is not purchasable or tradable as it is. In addition to purchasing resources here, players may trade on a two to one basis, any two identical goods for any one good of a different color. Okay. So purchasing goods, pretty simple. All of these are 10 bucks a piece, 20 bucks a piece, 30 bucks a piece, okay? And just because my company only needs black, pink, and blue doesn't mean I can't buy brown. I absolutely can because if I choose to, I then could possibly trade for other colors out here into the market, okay? Any question on purchasing goods? Okay, after purchased available goods that and let's say here, I'll mix this up. Let's say I have that and I have that. All right, then we go into actually producing. So producing is, has three prerequisites which a company must have to be able to produce. All worker spaces in a factory must be occupied. So for instance, if it were like this, I could run this factory between, because it's either workers and or automated workers but it must be full. Well, this one's not full, so the second company could not operate, only the first factory that can, okay? Then it must have all of the input resources that it requires. Well, this one does have that, okay, so we're good to go there. Then all factories to the left of the current factory have to have produced this turn. So meaning, if I had it like this, I can't choose to skip this factory, so maybe I only have that. Well, I can't operate this factory because this factory hasn't run. Does that make sense? You always yeah. operate left to right and it has to go left to right in, well, in operating order, okay? Assuming all those conditions are met then, the factory can produce goods. What's gonna happen? We're gonna discard factory by factory. So these resources will then come up into Haymarket Square then I'm going to get from the supply goods that are produced, including any automation bonus goods. So I get two goods plus one additional for that. That's a total of three goods then produced, okay? Then this factory would then fire if it were fully manned, which it is there. So these will then be discarded also up to Haymarket Square there. Then I would get three more goods produced for a total of six goods produced, okay? Then if I had any managers up here per, and I should have done this for the first factory, the manager triggers with the factory, then my appeal will have gone up one. So for Spalding, if Spalding were up there on the board, there it then would immediately go and oh hey i get a worker well if we take a look at my tableau i don't have space for the worker i would then just get 25 dollars to the company coffers okay but then now i get to actually sell goods which is the next step so i'm going to sell goods and i have up to six that i can sell and note the type of company that it is each row has a associated type of goods on it that it can sell to each company. So this is a dry goods company, meaning I can only sell to the second row. Well, I have six goods. So if I chose, I could sell three to the first one. As you can see, there is no availability in the second column, and I could sell three more to the last one. All right, pretty simple on that. So I fill the demand tiles. If I have filled a demand tile in the middle, 
or in the right column, you'll notice at the top of those columns, you'll see a bonus. So the value of each good that I sold, because I have a salesperson, is $30 per good. I sold six goods, 30 times six, that's 180 bucks. In addition to that, I get the $50 because I completed a contract in that column. So 180 plus 50, it's $230 that I now made for that, okay? Keep that total in mind, 230 bucks. Now, yeah, so that equates to $23 a share, okay? Regardless of where the share is held, whether it's in the bank pool, in the company charters, here, or if it's company, if it's owned by players, it's $23 a share, which matters because now we're going to go into pay dividends. What am I gonna do with that $230? I have two choices. I can either pay the shareholders, i.e. the people that own the shares, or I can withhold putting all the money here into the company coffers. So if I pay the shareholders, so I would pay them $23 per 10% or $23 per share. So if I pay out, I would get $23 times three, that would be $69. I just made, my company didn't make that, I made $69, $23 a share, so that makes mm -hmm. sense. I don't wanna beat that dog too much, but I really wanna drive this point home, okay? So then, if the company owns the remaining 70%, the company now gets paid seven times 23. So the difference between the uh, 230 minus the 69, which uh, math on 21. camera, $61. $61. So the company would make $61. I will have made, no, that's wrong. 161. 161 the company will have made and I would have made $69. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's if I pay out, okay? However, I could choose to withhold. Company gets all 230 bucks. However, there is a penalty for that. And that is, we're then going to go into adjusting the share value. So we're talking about Spalding here, okay? Just focusing on that one. If I paid out, the share price will either stay the same or move up one, two, or three spaces on the share track. If the total amount made was lower than the share value, it stays the same or it just spins in place. So if I sold a total of $35 worth of goods or less, it just spins in place. However, I sold $230, keep that in mind. So that amount is not one, not two, but three more than three times the value of this. I would be able to conceivably jump three steps. Mm -hmm. However, if you were before this little dotted line right here, before the $60 mark, the most you can do is a double jump. So if I'm valued at 35, I would then double jump up to there. If I were already at 60 and I sold for 230, well, that's a triple jump, one, two, three. But now, if I made 230 at 120, that's not quite double, which means that would have only been a single jump for that. Does all that make sense, how that goes? However, we're back at 35, and the company chose to withhold and keep all 230 bucks here. Well, there's a penalty. The shareholders are upset, so the share value drops one step. That's, pay, that's adjusting the share value. Does that make sense? Yep. Any questions on adjusting that? All right, last but not least, we then, after the company operates, refill the resource market. Well, if there is anything empty of these three, so for instance, if the company bought that, then these would shift over. Then we would draw from the bag and refill based on the number shown behind, below the current decade. So it's either three, four, five, or six resources, okay? If, moving back, the company had bought all the ones that were here and all the ones that were there, that would slide over, that would slide over, we would refill, we would refill, so on and so forth, okay? However, if it were something like this, nothing gets refilled because those are not empty. Keep that in mind. The one strategy advice I would give is don't rely on the markets entirely. There will be buildings that come out that produce goods as well as capital assets. Maybe look to do some of those so that if you're not first or second in appeal, you don't get stuck in an unfortunate situation with the markets, okay? Last but not least, 
we have the cleanup phase, real quick. We're going to remove from the game any filled demand tiles. So those two would come out of the game completely. Thank you, Martin. That would slow, actually, this would actually get removed after the first decade. Then we're going to, we're going to ret return the goods to the, uh, I'm sorry, the goods to the supply here. Thank you. Then we're going to remove the rightmost capital asset from the game, slide and refill. Anything that's in the $10 market will then go to the Haymarket Square, slide and refill. And then we will refill these top to bottom, right to left. So first, second, third, as it were, out there. We continue through five rounds. After the operation phase of the, um, uh, the fifth round or fifth turn or fifth decade, everyone's going to sell their shares at current market value. Whoever has the most money wins. And that is City of the Big Shoulders. I think you missed about what happens when this empties. Ah, good call. If the bag ever empties, which can happen, and all the resources are drawn at random out of this bag, if this is ever empty, we then take everything that's in Haymarket Square, throw it back into the bag. We then refill wherever we need to refill, and then we put two of every color out back into Haymarket Square, and that's that.